well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when this finds you. Hope those of you in Texas have sort of recovered. Not everybody has. And uh, been pretty devastating. I might talk a little bit about that in this video. But uh, just want to start off and ask a question. Have you ever read the book, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire? Do you know what one of the biggest problems they had with that civilization? They expected way too much for the government. They depended way too much on the government. And the expectation had actually become so high that they forgot how to do things for themselves and, and do for others. Now, by the time you hear this, it, it'll be uh, the event, the weather event will be two weeks old at that, at that point. But during this period, Ted Cruz was being roasted for taking a trip to Cancun while Texas was dealing with the extreme weather event. Now, hey, I don't care about what Ted Cruz did. My duty was to look after my own family and make sure they were cared for. How many of you have ever flown before on an airplane? In every flight, what has the flight attendant told you each time the plane starts to back away from the gate? You were instructed if the cabin loses pressure at any time to put your own oxygen mask on first. And sadly, many people, especially black Democrats, were all upset because that's not what a leader does according to them. And just based on the people we've looked to as a race, as leaders today and in the past, we have no clue what a leader is supposed to look like. And question anyway, why do we always need a leader? Black folks felt that Cruz could have at least settled in with his family and then came back, flew back into the States to look after his constituents and pass out water or something like that. Or we that simple-minded. Apparently we are. We keep expecting the government to function where we the people should be functioning. What does Proverbs 13, 22 say? A good man takes care of his family. Well, you know, technically it says a good man takes care of his children's children. But over in uh, 1 Timothy, it also says the husband man looks after his family. Now, that's one of the biggest problems we have in this society today. We keep expecting the government to function where the people in the church should be functioning. Now, I have to get a church some credit. There were quite a few churches and organizations that did step up this time. But you know what? Every time a disaster strikes, the people step up anyway, because that's the way we're made by our creator. It's an automatic instinct that he put in us to show agape love. Sure. Some of your politicians, especially the black ones and the ones with the socialist mindset, uh, did I already say black ones? Uh, went out and passed out water like, like dope dealer Nino Brown from the movie New Jack City when he was passing out those turkeys to the people that he was actually oppressing. Now, let me say this again. Cruz did what he was supposed to do. He made sure his family was safe. His family was safe. Guess what I did? I made sure my family was safe. Guess what my friends with families did? They made sure their families were safe. Guess what my married older neighbor did? He made sure his wife was in a safe environment. And, and people love to tell me that politicians or government authorities were put in place by God to serve the people. Well, the people in positions may have want on that commitment, but they don't do that anymore. Y'all expectations are too high for these people. They used to serve the people, but today they serve themselves. But what did God tell Samuel about the people? He said to give them the king since they're hard-headed. Black people, you're hard-headed. You always want a leader. You always want a king. You ain't figured out how to do nothing on your own. 
And don't say you got a job and take care of your house because the system told you to do that. Now, let me go ahead and hit below the belt a little bit because at this point, I don't care whose feelings get hurt. The only people that were upset with what Cruz did were single women without a protective husband. I said it. Yeah, I said it. These women don't understand the protection mechanism that a real husband provides. Did I go out of town? No. Many of these uh, same women who were complaining about Cruz would say, I'm not a political leader. I'm going to say this again. Politicians are not our leaders. Politicians are not our leaders. And let me explain something. Men in the home are our leaders. Well, let me rephrase that. Real men in the home are the real leaders. The order that God put in place and the way it's supposed to work is God, family, and then country. That doesn't just apply to regular everyday men. That applies to every man. Doesn't matter what his position is or his status in life. A study was done several years ago and not one of the people who were surveyed in that study who that were over the age of 90 said they wished they would have spent more time at the office. Each one of them said they would have spent more time with their families. Ted Cruz doesn't owe the people anything, especially an apology. Had it been me, I mean, I wouldn't apologize to none of y'all. Uh, matter of fact, I probably would have tied a piece of mistletoe to the back of my pants and walked away from you. Ted Cruz's obligation was to his family first, not you. Did you hear me earlier say family comes before country? That's because a man's family comes before his job and the country, which means the citizens, which means you. A man's family comes before the Constitution. A man's family comes before his past and his church. A man's family comes before his neighbors and community. A man's family comes before his job. And based on how jobs treat people today, they the people on the jobs think the job comes before a man's family, just like y'all black people who complain about Cruz. Y'all think y'all come before Cruz and his family. And I can hear somebody say, no, I just wish he'd have settled his family and came back and, and looked after his constituents. Well, how many of you went to work on the same day as you criticizing Cruz for not being available? A lot of people may be thinking I voted for Cruz because I'm talking about it. Nope. Uh, Romans 13, 8 says we should owe no man anything except love. So let me tell you this. Your politicians don't love you. And since I just mentioned Romans 13, let me say this. That is one of the most improperly taught chapters in the entire Bible. But I guess the seminaries did their job well enough that those who graduated from those institutions teach us what seminaries wanted us to understand. See, there was no such thing as seminaries centuries ago. All of your preachers were what they call lay preachers. They didn't go to school. And, you know, they would start throwing out Paul out there and Paul went to the top school out there. Okay, that was Paul. But most of your preachers were lay people. When you think about them 12 disciples, what, what school did they go to? When you think about Yeshua, Christ, what school did he attend? Did you hear about St. John? Did What university did he attend? So you can throw Paul out there all you want to. And I'm not discounting anything Paul did because Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And I'm just saying most of your teachers were not school educated. Fishermen, tax collectors. I mean, come on, carpenters. But the seminary did what they wanted to do because they wanted to minimize what the lay preachers were teaching. And based on what a lot of these seminary preachers are teaching today, we all off the Bible. Because they wanted to get you away from that true teaching. But, you know, you got, you know, Dr. Reverend so and so. So he must be credible. And so that's your problem, especially when you're black. You got to have titles next to everything before you listen to somebody. You ain't got to listen to me. I don't care. But 
The mere fact that today's Bible translations say obey governing authorities and not higher powers should be a red flag to you. Now, I have a copy of an old Dewey Reams Bible uh, from 1582, and it says higher powers. And I was uh, listening to a guy talk a couple of days ago, and he was telling me about the Sefer Bible. Bible. And, uh, you know, I looked it up and I saw a lot of people discounting the book because of what the book was teaching. And based on some of my study and understanding, um, the people that were trying to discount the Sefer Bible uh, can't really prove their position. But I'm not telling you to go out and get the Sefer Bible. I don't have it yet. I was just saying I heard a guy talk about it. And so if Dewey Ream said higher powers, who put governing authorities in place of that? Governing authorities and higher powers are not the same thing, especially when you understand that chapter. Do your little research. Do your homework. A lot of you are working at home anyway. As a matter of fact and record, the version of the Bible that many people want to shy away from because it's supposedly hard to read and chauvinist and they and thou and yay, you know, people talking about they have a hard time understanding it. That's what I was raised on. I was raised on the King James Bible. And that's what I studied for years. And I'll read other versions of the Bible, but guess what I come back to? King James. I don't care. I don't care what you read, but I'm just telling you, the version you're staying away from is the version you need to be reading. I mean, I've always asked God for understanding before I ever cracked the Bible open anyway. And I never could understand before I even came across all of these other versions of the Bible. Why people were having such a hard time understanding King James? Because I always asked God for his guidance when I was getting ready to read it. But that's just me. Now, I bet you didn't know that some of the more modern Bible versions removed entire passages from their translations. And that was actually done to mislead people. Some tr translations actually interchange Elohim, that's God, and Yahshua with Satan. But it's done so subtle that most people miss it in their Bible reading. You know what else the King James Version used to contain? The Apocrypha. Guess what seminary preachers are telling us? Stay away from the Apocrypha. <laughs> and I mean, one day I might have to do a video and, and get into that Apocrypha and, and, and tell you some of the reasons that I believe they were removed. But uh, because it it has a lot to do with what's happening in this country and around the world, the four corners of the earth where the tribes were scattered. So... I, I might do a video on that one day. I don't know. It just depends. But the Apocrypha was in the King James Bible for 274 years, from 1611 to until 1885. And uh, who removed it and why? Who changed the word from servant in the Bible to slave in the Bible to make black folks think they belonged at the bottom rungs of society? I mean, do your little research and find out who lived in the original ghettos. Now, as I stated, if you really understand everything going on around the world from a biblical perspective, it will be no secret of who is doing what and why they're doing it. But you keep right on focusing on Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden, because that's exactly where they want your attention to be. Most of your politicians, left and right, liberal and conservative, Democrat and Republican, are about as godless as a people come. But you pledge allegiance to them more than God, um, the God you claim to love. Did you listen to the last video where I talked about the Pledge of Allegiance and how families used to get up in the morning and, and they would pray and read the Bible? And as soon as the school system came into being, the First thing they start doing, rush the kids out of the door to get them into their school, and then they start pledging allegiance to the country. I mean, you know, but they call it the flag. And like I said, I don't care who gets mad about what I talk about. Study for yourself. I mean, 
the Bible talks about holding on to traditions. Doesn't it? You're going to put your tradition before everything. And pledge and allegiance ain't nothing but a tradition. I mean, do what you want to do. I'm not telling you. I'm just telling you, study for yourself. But you got too much faith in politicians and the government. You know, I was uh, looking at some stuff today, and they were talking about this. The Congress is supposed to be, I guess, voting on that uh, stimulus package this week. And uh, looking at, I think, the museum, uh, museums around the country is getting so many millions of dollars, even though they've been closed for the last, last 12 months. Uh, so many millions are going to Native American housing. So many millions are going to Native American languages. I think 750 million going to the CDC so they can work on global health initiatives. I mean, we paying for global health initiatives around the country. What you going to get if when they approve it? 1400 But I'm going to say it again. Universal basic income. Because I've already read that they're, they're already working on another stimulus package after this one gets approved. I mean, if they just printing up money and, through, and doing ad numbers in a computer anyway, why they can't put a million in your account? I mean, that's just my thoughts. But guess what? How many women who were married complained about what, what Ted Cruz did? Well, I know of one. A married woman who complained and for the sake of this video I, I won't even address that but I would love for the single women to have a conversation with a young lady named Paris you know I could have said my wife but a lot of women because they hit so messed up in the head would just think it's me talking through her and not her doing her own talking like she don't have a brain say so that feminist movement got y'all messed up in the head now let me tell you something about my wife. She's no nonsense. She has a quiet strength, though. Does she always agree with me? Nope. And and then I have to remind her, you know, that I'm right all the time. No, I'm just kidding. So I mentioned Perez because she doesn't even live here in this country. And she immediately noticed who was doing most of the complaining. Paris understands femininity masculinity and the role that men and women are supposed to have in this society and that and you know what that's why we have a lot of single women they don't really know how to be proper wives to decent men submission negro please cook better hit that drive through on your way home from work and make sure you get me something to eat too and i, I just remember a conversation i had with a young lady some years back about cooking and cleaning and she told me her man knew she didn't do either and she wasn't about to start. See, a lot of y'all women out there think your looks and your body going to hold a man long term. That's a short term answer. That's a short term solution. Let me ask you a question. You think that that couple's still together? And women, you're going to have to bring more to the table than that thing to the relationship. That thing can be had anywhere. Might not be yours, but it's a whole lot of them out there. Your look's going to fade. Your skin's going to wrinkle. Your tight and toned body will not always remain. And then what are you going to bring to the table once all of that fades away? If you got a man with physical features only and there's no substance behind that, guess what's going to happen? As soon as those physical features are no longer satisfactory, He's going to go look for another woman who has the physical features, but he will leave you. Trust me on that one. Too many women want to wear the headship title, except when it's time to take headship. And, and you're not geared to take, you weren't made to take headship. I'm, I'm going to let you on a little secret. Women are not the head. Even if you're a single woman in your house, you ain't a head. Because if you really understood your Bible, as a female, you're always supposed to be under some male headship, even if you're single. Now, 
if you really understood it, it's not supposed to be your pastor. You're supposed to be under your dad's headship until a male suitor that's suitable to your dad comes along. And then he takes over headship once he asks for your hand in marriage. That's the type of headship. You ain't never supposed to have no past as your male head. Nowhere. And, uh, you know, we got some different situations. And one of my sisters and I were talking about that the other day. About what happens to a woman whose father dies. And so, I don't remember everything we talked about in that conversation. But we did talk about how you find male headship. And I'm going to still say, it's still not your pastor. But that man's going to leave you if all you have to keep him and think you're going to keep him with is your physical features. Women were never meant to be heads. Many of today's women cannot be married because they will not submit to a man's headship no matter what. So y'all got a problem with that word submit or the word submission. Running around here talking about men can't handle a strong black woman. And see, that's your problem. You think a man wants a strong woman. And because of that, you're still single. A man prefers a woman of strength. A woman who's nurturing, loving, and caring. He doesn't want to do battle at work and then come home to battle you because the house has two people fighting for headship. Some men work late because of women like you. Now, let me get back to what I was talking about. See, I can go in so many different directions and talk forever. But I'm going to get back on some of the stuff. But I, I just like to, because a lot of the stuff I'm talking about actually works together with each other. If you if you go and look at my, listen to my videos since I've been doing this, a uh, great majority of them, you can see all of them are pieces to a puzzle. But the problem that many people in society have today is they have yet to figure out that politicians don't serve the citizens. They serve another group of people and it ain't us. We're still acting as if we live under Caesar Pharaoh Herod as a people. Do you think that $10, 20 or $100 you give to a political campaign even gets their attention? Especially when you got people behind the scene giving them millions. Let it make you feel good. Let me say this again. Go and read the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Federalist Papers, the Anti-Federalist Papers, and let me know if you find the words politician or political party in any of them. Trust me, I ain't going to hold my breath because I'm going to turn blue and purple by the time you find it because you ain't going to find it. And that, that's going to be a bad situation for me if I'm sitting there holding my breath waiting on you to find it. Because I've already read them. They ain't in there. In uh, his farewell address, George Washington, and I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly. He said something about encroachment and spirit. And how, I don't know that. So I'm going to paraphrase because uh, I read his farewell address some years ago. And he actually warned against dividing the people via political party line. And, you know, in that address, like I said, I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly what it said, but uh, he said political parties form into one being. And they eventually become a real despotism. Do you understand what a despotism is? Why do you think we keep hearing that the United States is a democracy from our politicians? Because your politicians know Historically, that every democracy has turned into a despotism. Study history for yourself. The very next thing Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson did when Washington left office was to divide the people among party lines because they had different views. And, you know, even back then, when you voted for president and vice president, the person that had the most votes was the president. The person that had the second most votes was the vice president. It didn't even matter if they were from uh, different parties. That's just the way the system worked. Uh, but, you know, talking about those uh, documents, that, that actually reminds me of a conversation I had with a lady a few years ago. And, you know, she, she thought I was an illiterate black guy. And so you already know what color she was. I mean, I'm not putting all of them down, but some of them are still stupid and ignorant. 
You know what I mean? Even even black people are stupid and ignorant. Not all of them. Because you got idiots that wear every racial or cultural label. But she really had a real bad mentality when it came to race. But I don't show my hand. I like to let people talk. I like to listen to people more than I talk. And, you know, you might find it hard to believe based on the length of my videos if you've never met me or if you've never been in one of the events where I did some public speaking. But I don't like to talk. And so I like to get to know people uh, more than talking to people. You know, I don't, I don't even want to talk about myself even. You know, unless you just ask me a direct question, you know, it's just, you know, I've read some books uh, on how to be a good conversation start and, you know, things like that. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of a, this guy that took this young lady out on a date. He was really, really stuck on himself. And uh, he spent the whole first part of the date at dinner just telling and bragging to the young lady about himself. And then he said, uh, well, that's enough of me talking about myself. What do you think about me? <laughs> and that's about how people are today. They love us of self. And I mean, I'm talking, we should love ourselves, but I'm talking about loving self to the detriment of being able to feel empathy and compassion for other people. I mean, so many people in today's society care more about a pet, a dog, a cat than they do their fellow human beings. Y'all, y'all more than likely all seen the commercial where the, uh, the young lady, the lady has the cat on her shoulder on the sofa or whatever. And her mom, her son said, mom, I'm bleeding. She said, get a band. I mean, she he said, I failed. And she said, get a band aid. He said, I'm bleeding. And she said, get two. Now, her son's bleeding, but she's sitting there playing with that old stanky cat. But that's how most of society is right now. A great deal of society is right now. Putting more value on pets than they do people. I mean, just down, like I mentioned earlier about the weather event, the ice event we had here. They actually locked people up because they left their pets outside. But we had people that died from the cold. So let me say that again. They took people to jail who left their pets outside if the neighbor reported them, but we had people who died. Okay, chew on that for a little bit. But I was uh, talking to this young lady. Well, she was she was a young lady. I mean, I guess you you know I heard the guy say, uh, "Man, it's about as young as the woman he feels." But she was a she was a lady, and uh, and I mean, there were quite a few of us around, and most everybody else just just kind of despised the lady. But you know, I'll listen to a tree if it talks to me because I love to listen. So we were at the University of Houston, which is the college I attended. And I told her when I attended there, I played football. And at that point, her conversation really shifted. And it was like the wheels in her head convinced at that point that I was really a dumb black jock. And was she in for a rude awakening that day? She started teaching me about the Federalist Papers. Like I was a student in her class and no, she wasn't even a professor. I listened and listened while she talked. And then she said, you know, Myron, you could learn a lot if you read them. And I said, oh, really? She said, oh, yes. I said, what if I told you I've already read them and the anti-federalist papers? And I read the Constitution once a year. And I used to read the Declaration of Independence once a year. And uh, I remember when my Uncle Morty He's a retired fireman now. And uh, he was telling me a story about a couple of his co-workers went to ambulance one night and went out and stopped at a strip club. And they in the strip club. And the captain just happened to be driving home that night and passed and saw the ambulance at the strip club and he knew it wasn't a call. And so uh, 
the captain circles back, parks next to the ambulance outside the strip club, calls them on a the walk and talk it, asks for their position. They told him, I think they, they were to one of the hospitals over in the medical center. And he told him, well, as soon as you finish, I need you to meet me somewhere. And then my uncle said, the guys come running out of the strip club. And there he was. And my uncle said, and my uncle liked to use the word rookie. He said, man, you could have bought them two rookies for half a penny. And uh, when I told a lady about me reading that, that, that kind of made me think about that story from Uncle Morty. You could have bought it for half a penny because I was supposed to be a dumb black jock. But instead of worrying about what the news told you to focus on once again, what did you do to help the people around you during this time? There were a lot of people complaining about what Ted Cruz did. And amazingly, some of these same folks left their homes and went to stay in hotels themselves while they pointed the finger at Ted Cruz. So they ran away from the people they live and supposed to love, but Cruz did something wrong. And if you did something, keep it to yourself. We don't need to know what you did. Matthew 6 and 1 says you do things in secret anyway. Lots of people want others to think they're a good person, so they will post pictures on social media to show people their good deeds for others. Or they'll tell others of some of the good deeds they did or plan on doing. Well, if that's the case, you didn't do it because you care. You did it because you want others to believe you care. Hey, if Cruz is wrong, he's going to have to answer to a judge that is much higher than all of us. But I have a question for you, black Democrats, because it was mostly you, well, only you, who was complaining about Cruz. And, and you know, the the uh, I, I said you because uh, Cortez up out of New York, you know, she said she black too. <laughs> Check it for yourself. I didn't make that up. Uh, but what do you have to say about Joe Biden calling African-American and Hispanic stupid? Now, he didn't say it directly, but he said it. I've already given you enough information to show you that blacks in America are not African-American. But anyway, Joe Biden said the reason blacks were not taking a Verona Cyrus shot is because they don't know how to use the internet. Are you kidding me? Blacks in America have reason to be cautious about something that was supposedly created in less than 12 months when it normally takes 10 years. Have you looked at the video on this channel, no title for this? That's the title of it, no title for this. And I'll give you a little history lesson on blacks in the medical establishment. So blacks have reason to be cautious because something like that is supposed to take a minimum 10 years. And even then with all of that research, there's still a multitude of side effects. You know, my wife and I had a TV on in one of these, and I mean, every commercial break, you're gonna see a pharmaceutical come on, every commercial break. And when they get through reading the side effects, my wife said, you probably do better just battling your condition without the drugs. But, How did they come up with something in less than 12 months and it's supposed to be effective already? And according to the Gates Foundation, black people should be the first in line to get it. Now, according to Al Gore, he created the internet years ago and, and I'm sure he taught his greatest voting bloc, uh, black people, uh, how to use the internet first. Where was Joe when Al was giving the tutorials? So let me get this straight. If you didn't vote for Jim Crow Joe, you ain't black. And if you voted for Jim Crow Joe, you're stupid. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at Joe. Joe said both of them. Who lives in rural America? Because Joe said in the video that blacks and Hispanic, African Americans and Hispanics in the rural areas or in the inner city, poor neighborhoods, that they didn't know how to use the internet. Now you got all upset with Trump because Trump said made a statement uh, something talking about uh, uh, uh poor kids or just as smart as white kids or something like that. But I think Joe Biden made a similar statement to that too. But you only heard what Trump said. You ignore everything 
the people you vote for say you hypocrites so who lives in rural America more than anybody else white people and uh, so why did Biden say African Americans and Hispanics who live in rural areas are stupid why he didn't say white people who live in rural areas are stupid why he didn't say white people who live in trailer homes are stupid I mean, and I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just asking questions. Why didn't he say white people that live in inner city are stupid? Why didn't he say Asian Indians don't know how to use the internet? Why didn't he say Chinese didn't know how to use the internet? Why didn't he say Japanese don't know how to use the internet? But you know, I had somebody tell me he didn't call them stu directly stupid, but he didn't say it directly, but he called you stupid. I mean, when he say you can't figure something out, you're stupid, okay? And my wife don't like me to use that word, but still ain't figured out one to replace it with yet. So you can't figure things out, so you're stupid. Now, African-American and Hispanic hardly live in those areas. But how many of you even saw that video? You ain't going to see it because the news media suppresses anything negative about Joe Biden. But had Trump said the same thing, it would be plastered on your television 24-7. Anything that will show the people who Biden really is amazingly gets silenced. I mean, the guy's been in office for a little over a month and we haven't heard about any good he's doing. All of the news media painted him with halos while the race was on to the presidency you would think all we will be hearing about is all of the good he is doing since he's been in office nope all the new news stations keep talking about it donald trump now i remember saying something to a guy about uh, barack obama right after trump took office in 2017 and he quickly reminded me that obama wasn't in office anymore why don't these same standards get applied both ways? Because Donald Trump is out of office and black people still talking about it. The news media still talking about it. And I know because you intellectually challenged, you'll try to justify you talking about Donald Trump and in a different light than Barack Obama. So intellectually challenge sounds better, doesn't it? Okay, if I remember that one, I, I'll use that one going forward. The ironic thing is, the same people are hypocrites. They keep talking about Trump this, Trump this, Trump this, Trump that. Trump said this, Trump did this, Trump did that. I mean, your, your understanding is limited. I saw a video uh, over a week ago from a woman whose son is a type 1 diabetic. And his insulin used to cost $60 a month. And I remember sharing an article with some folks uh some time back and it was saying that pharmaceuticals were going to go up and insulin was going to grow up because Trump had put some places in it to lower those prices and somebody told me it was fake news but this woman went to the pharmacy her son's insulin used to cost $60 a month and she went to get that first dose since Biden's been in office and guess how much that same insulin is now and she said when she walked up to the window the pharmacist told, pulled her to the side and said, come over here. She said, you know, I don't know if you still want this insulin because the price has increased substantially. And the lady said, you know, my son is going to need it for the rest of his life, so I don't have a choice. But that same insulin is now $500. Now, she was sort of fortunate, if you can call it that, because she had a coupon that knocked $200 off. So she probably used good RX or something like that. So she still had to pay $300, which is still five times more than what she's been paying. 
Several studies and reports have also come out over the past 11 months showing that many people are lonely since being told of social distance. Look, do some research and stop listening to these people on television. They're paid shields. S-H-I-L-L-S. So you, you know which what, what word I'm talking about. Not S-H-I-E-L-D. They're paid shields. They have a job to do, and based on the conversation of many people, those folks are accomplishing their goal. People can't think, so they need another adult, adult to tell them what to think. Do you know that when you suffer from loneliness, your lifespan actually decreases? When you have a person say that if he does a good enough job, he can reduce world population, and you get something like what we're dealing with, and then this same person said we won't go back to normal until everybody gets poked multiple times, and then recently come out and say people will need not one, not two, but three shots to deal with the expanding variants. Did you already know there were already four variants out there already? Guess what that means? Every time a new variant comes out, they're going to want to give you a shot. Have you heard about the new Ebola strain in Africa? Now, amazing that as a whole, Africa rejected the narrative and now all of a sudden they got Ebola. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. But see, that's what I'll be telling you. You don't realize how the puzzle pieces go together. I mean, there is one bright spot with, with uh, Joe Biden. After what happened here in Texas uh, a couple of weeks ago, we said, oh, Joe, stop global warming. Oh, my bad. It's not global warming anymore. It's climate change. Because, see, you know, back uh, about 70 years ago, they used to call it global cooling. They said the earth was cooling too much. I don't know if you remember, about 30 years ago, they said we're going back to another ice age. So how did we get global warming and we headed to an ice age? Y'all don't pay attention to nothing. And uh, the reason it's called climate change is because governments around the world have been modifying the weather since 1891, especially during the Vietnam War. They know all about changing the climate. I remember hearing a, a soldier, a former, former army ranger, he was talking about when they were over in Iraq. And he was saying that they were getting ready to advance and a heavy rainstorm came down. They were getting ready to march across the desert. He said it was rain like he had never ever seen his entire life and he said so we stopped our commander gave us uh, orders to we were going to not advance until the next morning he said when we got up the next morning he said all that heavy rain had showed us where all the mines were across that desert hmm. is that coincidence but i don't want to harp on that too long Speaking of the Verona Cyrus, did you ever stop and think? We've been getting daily reports that have been coming out since the shots have been administered showing people who've died by the hundreds and home by the thousands. These people have experienced side effects that are so serious that they had to go to the emergency room. Not only have people died, in some cases, some of them died the very next day. Some have even lost their babies through miscarriage. Now, I'm not saying that the shot caused these things to happen, but I am saying these people experience these things after taking a shot. Do you know what they tell us? Uh, they, they tell us it's a vaccine, but the manufacturers actually say it's not. One manufacturer study is actually not slated to be completed until October 2022. Did you hear me? We in February, March, well, well, I tell you, I recorded videos early, so this should come out. I think today will be March 1st when it comes out, but I'm actually recording this in February, okay? So we're talking about, we're in February 2021, March 2021, and the study is not slated to be completed to October 2022. But get this, the other study is not slated for completion until January 2023. Are you listening to me? So if these studies are being conducted, guess who they're being conducted on? You. You are the trial. Listen, you got two shots. Can you take your mask off? No. 
You got two shots, are you not protected from the virus? No. You got two shots, can you stand next to each other? No. You got two shots, are you not immune? No. You got two shots, are you protected from spreading the virus? No. You got two shots, can you attend the movie? No. You got two shots, can you lift lockdown? No. You got two shots, can you open your business without restrictions? No. You got two shots, is one mask now sufficient? No. You got two shots, will it eliminate the virus? No. So the question is, what does the shot actually do? Before the shot was available, if a person contracted the coronavirus and they died, regardless of all underlying medical issues, they died from the virus. If they died after taking a shot, they amazingly died from their underlying conditions. That's amazing how that works, ain't it? But you know what? A lot of these folks who actually died had no health issues whatsoever. But isn't it ironic that all of these people start experiencing side effects and more people started pushing back and more people started uh, rejecting the mask wearing. They started rejecting the system and all of a sudden we get the ice storm of the century in Texas and around the country. I mean, I think I heard a guy talk about he was up in Missouri the other day and said they got temperatures they never ever had before in that state. So, is that coincidence? Or is it Mother Nature? Or is it a planned event? I don't know. But you get this ice storm to take your mind off all of this stuff that's going on. I mean, I don't know how many times I have to keep telling you all this stuff. But y'all think I'm crazy. I mean, let me call my wife in and ask her am I crazy. But no, let me let her let, stay where she at. Because she's going to probably say yes. But anyway. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I was even talking to my mail carrier today. And uh, we've had snowfall much worse in, in Houston, Texas than we ever experienced that week of the storm. So how did our water line and power grid feel this time? What is a rolling blackout? It's a controlled event by the government where they turn off your utilities for you instead of the weather. Because they say you're going to overload the system. We are the energy capital of the world. So why did we have energy issues? Then they had the nerve to say that they would not have done what they did. We will be out with, without power for months. They said we were four and a half minutes away from being in blackouts for months. How would they know to make a statement like that? Are they prepping the mind for future events? I mean, I don't know. The group ERCOT told Greg, Greg Albert a week before that they were more than prepared for the event. And by the way, I think four of them just resigned over at ERCOT. But uh, you got to do a little bit more studying research to find out what was really going on behind the scenes right before all of this happened. But hey, what do I know? You know, don't listen to nothing I say. Um, but ERCOT told Abbott we were ready. And you know who the people got mad at? Greg Abbott. They wanted him to resign because they say he handled the whole thing improperly. He declared Texas a disaster area before it hit. And then Joe Biden just declared it maybe a day or two ago. And now everybody want to hail Joe Biden as a hero. You know, I remember when disasters hit under Bush, you know, what took him so long to go visit those places? Joe Biden been here yet? Okay. I mean, he might come by the time you, you catch this video. But uh, you don't have the same expectation. I mean, y'all even got mad at Condoleezza Rice because she didn't run down to New Orleans. But Barack Obama didn't go to Haiti. Michelle went. Y'all don't have nothing to say about that. Them people down in Haiti black. And the black president didn't even go check on him. He sent his wife. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But did you uh, also ever think this may have been a test and Texas has its own power grid separate from the rest of the country with the exception of El Paso and a couple other places? I mean, I'll tell you what. I'm almost tired of trying to communicate with 
with you folks who are stuck in your old world, limited thinking. Your thinking is limited. So many people in society can't see past liberal and conservative, left and right, Republican and Democrat. If it doesn't fit into that box, if it doesn't fit into the box and those parameters, your conversation is limited. It's useless. Nothing outside of that conversation even makes sense to them. But hey, what do I know? Is available at Amazon, Barnes and Open, directly from me, at myronjones at gmail.com. Have a good day.